All right. Before I clean up the outside edges, I just want to kind of treat the whole thing. So I'm going to do a clone stamp over the top of everything. A new layer. Over and outside, even my head grouping. There we go. Mark it red. Call it clone. Use the tool. And if there's any place I feel like it needs some of the color, some of the texture from somewhere else, this is a safe way to put it. So let's say on the tail, which is something I haven't messed with much at all, I can bring a little bit of that tail color into the head. And I'm doing this with a 46% opacity. And I'm using option to move my target. I want to bring a little bit more of that color into the Wolverine stripe, which seems in the context of the, the main a little intense and blue. So this is just a way of kind of masking over things. And remember, it's on a separate layer, so it can always be turned off and adjusted. It's always good to kind of do it and then blend it in with your eraser. Soft edged. So this looks like kind of a weird patch right there. So clone stamp can help fix that. Kind of even it out. And just be kind of aware of how the lighting's working and if something's looking too flat. It takes a lot of patience and observation and a lot of drawing and painting and color theory to understand light logic and how to make all the illusions really believable. But you just want to pay attention. In digital art, you have the great option of seeing if what you're doing is helping or not. <laughs> and if it's not, try something else. That's why I do these on, on layers that I can take back. Okay, so once you're happy with your internal colors, edges, all that remains is getting the uh, the outside edges to be nice and clean. So it looks like a nice cutout. But you want to work on your internal edges first. Any remaining? I have some on the ear I need to work on. You can always mask them with the clone stamp, with other tools, with direct adjustment. The leg looks a little bare here. Bring a little bit in and then erase away from it. And sometimes what you're correcting are things from the actual reference photos. It's because photos aren't perfect. All right. That's kind of what I had in mind for this creature. Now let's clean up those ears. I'm gonna go right to that layer. It's not the ears that need cleaning up, it's this, all right. Some of this softness, sharpen that up. My eraser. Okay, so now how do I clean this? 
first you want to make sure you see it on different backgrounds. The first thing I want to do is separate out the, sh well, I'll get to that. Um, but I want to see it on white and make sure I don't have a lot of pixels floating outside that it looks okay color wise and focal point wise. I want to see it on black, same thing. And I want to see it on gray. Then I want to turn off all backgrounds, including my sketch. Right. Now, with the exception of my leaf here, everything else, the edges are in that layer. So for my, my fern kind of main, I'm going to turn off the effects just for the time being. So that's nice and sharp already. Now that that's turned off, because I can always turn that back on and I'll show you when I do. Now I'm going to go to my very top layer and I'm going to hold down option and I'm going to go to layer and say made visible. Notice my background is turned off. And that will give me, and then I'm going to turn off every other layer. Except for the effects on my Then I'm going to duplicate that layer that has the effects on the main, and I'm going to move that. Uh, oh, let's indicate it just so I know what it is. I'm going to mark that as green. This is if you use any layer styles. And then what I'm going to do is right click and say rasterize layer style. That will make those pixels that are created by the drop shadow effect locked into the layer. Why do I do that? I will show you with the white background. Because now I can just erase those directly with the 100% eraser. where they do not overlap my creature. Because I don't want to do a drop shadow on the background, I want to do a drop shadow onto my creature. Like onto its legs. So between the legs, I can erase it. I think that will make more sense as I start to clean this up. Okay, then I'm going to move that layer right underneath my merged layer. So this is what I have, right? Get rid of all that debris. Now everything else is in this one merged layer. And I have the white background turned on. I can change it to the gray background, which is easier to see things on. Or even the black but the checkerboard is not the easiest. And then I'm just going to go to my eraser, or I'm going to go to my lasso with the one pixel, pe uh, one pixel feather. And I'm on my merged layer here. I'm just going to start cutting it out cleanly. With fur and whiskers, there's going to be little jogs out I sometimes have to make. Organic stuff is messy, and I can do it in chunks like this. And then hit delete. But I want a nice clean cutout for what we're going to do with this creature. I'm going to cut around the teeth. And it's so nice to have it all in one layer instead of having to jump between all the different layers that gave me these images. He has a little bit of fur as a beard. He's got these little whiskers. Just trying to jog around all of those with my lasso tool with the one pixel feather. in chunks. So 
the little green coming through from the grass can be taken care of with the sponge. I can desaturate that at the end if I need. And it's funny, even though the, the fern mane was kind of nicely cut out on its own, it made it look a little too flat and even. So cutting it out with the one pixel feather along with everything else will make it look more believable as part of this creature. And again, I have to define my own edges here. to delete them out. And this is a safe way to do it because this is a merged copy. So I'm not actually deleting any pixels from the original source layers. And if you need to save memory, you can actually merge them and save it as a different Photoshop file. So you're really only working on this layer with background layers to cut it out. But you have another Photoshop file that has all of the source files in it. If you wanted to go back. That one pixel feather is pretty important, especially if you're doing something that has a soft edge to it like this does with all the fur. It's okay if you don't have time to do all of your ideas. I was going to do kind of uh, badger feet, but these feet are nicely defined and they work. I already have the focal points I want. So sometimes simplicity just wins out and the deadline, what you can get done by the deadline is what you can get done. So you stand behind it. Get some of that blue fur, get some of the very fuzzy accents on the leg here. But I don't need to get all of them. I get to kind of draw my own edges. Like a sticker that we're going to then put into an environment. So to finish off this assignment, you need to post your sketch your skeletal template sketch. You can post inspiration images if you like. For instance, if there was a Pokemon that was really instrumental in your thinking, you can post an image of that. But the only requirements are your sketch and then this composite done as a PNG. So I definitely want to show you how to save that. PNG is a, an online file format type. It's compressed and saves memory, but it supports transparency, which means it won't fill your background in with white. It will be like a, a sticker shaped image that makes it really easy to put into your, your landscape for our first proving ground. So we're getting a lot of practice selecting here, controlling edges, as I get to the back here, the creature is a little less in focus. And so I might change it to two pixels rather than one as a feather. And that will soften it a little bit to give me a little bit more grace as I cut it out. Make sure you close your selections. Oh, that's too much. And I'm trying to be quick here, but I'm also trying to be as accurate as I can, and that's where using a tablet helps. And I'm not zooming in so much that this takes forever, but I'm doing it in chunks and zooming in enough 